Okay, okay, we have four hot new release Louis Vuitton different Neville Fours to talk about today. And I'm not even a Neville girly and I'm excited about these. Louis Vuitton are going Neville crazy in this last quarter of the year and the Neville is gonna reclaim her crown as the it bag from the fashion house. Okay, so let's get into it. First off, I wanna talk about the Louis Vuitton Epi heritage colors that's coming out in September. So this is rumored to be priced at about 2000 euros. I don't know what the USA or Australia price is going to be. And so that will make it approximately 500 euros more than the standard canvas never fall in Europe. So they're gonna come out with three colors. So there's noir, which is black. I don't know how to say this properly, but fauve, which is like a cognac -y brown and Vert Borneo, which is a green. Now you guys know me, I'm Lady Vintage Bags. Vintage Louis Vuitton is my jam. And I already have three different bags in the vintage version of the fauve color. If you look at the French translation of the word fauve, or however it's pronounced, sorry for all the French speakers out there, I'm probably butchering it with my Australian twang, but it comes out as fawn. And what color am I holding? What is my favorite vintage Epi Louis Vuitton color? It's Kenyan Fawn. So to me, this is telling me they are re-releasing the Epi Kenyan Fawn color. Guys, this was a color that was released in 1985, which is around about the time Epi Leather was introduced to the brand. So this has been one of the original Epi color brands. And they ran this color all the way until the late 90s. So this had about like a 15 to 20 year run this color, and then they discontinued it. So all these bags that I'm holding were dated between 1985 and the late 90s. And guys, this color is finally back. This is my favorite Louis Vuitton Epi color. So guys, if you're loving the idea of this faux color on the Epi leather, but you're not a never fall kind of girl, go check out the vintage Louis Vuitton secondhand market because there's so many bags you can get crossbody bags, tote bags, mini bags that you can get in this fauve or fawn color. Okay, I'm getting distracted. Back to the never fall. Okay, they are going to come with a microfiber lining and the fauve color appears to be paired with gold hardware, which is the same as what you get on the vintage Kenyan fawn epi bags. They are all paired with gold hardware. Okay, so next up is the black. Now, black epi leather has never left Louis Vuitton. It was introduced in 1985 when Epi Leather was introduced and they've just never taken it away. So black Epi Leather has always been around. So if you're loving black Epi Leather, but maybe you don't want it never fall, you can go into the pre-love market and buy whatever bag you want in black Epi Leather. There's a dime a dozen out there if you're into it. Now, if you guys remember in 2013, they already released a black Epi Never Fall. So this is just probably that same bag brought up from the archives and re-released again. Like I don't see any difference. It is literally the same black Epi Neverfall. So if you're into the Neverfall and you're into the black Epi leather, check out the pre-love market. Maybe you can find the 2013 version and just save money because it's basically the same bag. Vert Borneo. So when I looked up the French translation of Vert, it says green. Borneo green or green Borneo. Vintage Louis Vuitton already had this color Borneo green. It was released in 1985 along with the Kenyan fawn, along with the black, and it lasted all the way until 1988. So if you're into this color green, green is a very calming color. You can find so many bags on the pre-love market with the Borneo green color. Now the vintage bags are paired with gold hardware where it appears as though this never fall is paired with silver hardware. So just depending on your personal preference, if you like gold hardware or you like a different style, go to the vintage pre-love market. If you're loving this never fall, go to buy this never fall. Now I saw on Lula Westlux TV channel that there's also gonna be a Castilian red release, but I couldn't find the picture of it. In 2013, they did release a shade of red already in the Epi Never Fall, but it wasn't the Castilian Red because the Castilian Red ran from 1987 to about 2004. And that bag was released in 2013. So it was already discontinued by that point. So it was probably what was the current shade of red at that time. Castilian Red, you can find a lot of those bags on the pre-love market of the vintage styles if you wanna see sort of what shade we're talking about. But this is a very bright red and it does have like tones of black streaks through the Epi leather as well. So that's why they called this collection the Louis Vuitton Epi Heritage because they literally pulled the colors from the archives. These are the heritage vintage colors. And I'm so happy to see them back, particularly my favorite. This is Kenyan Fawn. This is in the pochette accessoires. This is in the gorgeous St. Cloud saddle bag. This is in the GM size. And this classy little piece is the Sac 
Friedland, another crossbody bag. It can also double as a shoulder bag. If you guys want to see all my vintage Louis Vuitton bags, I'll actually leave my collection video here because I have like over 20 vintage Louis Vuitton bags. But one thing I do want to point out about the Epi Never Falls, whether we're talking about the ones from 2013 or the ones coming up now, is that there have been complaints that I found on the purse forum of the 2013, like that sort of run. So one complaint was Epi being a stiff leather in such a big bag, number one, can be very stiff to work with. So cinching in the size can be difficult and it's not going to be pliable like the canvas never fall. Number two, there were issues with the glazing. Remember at that time, there were so many pochette matisses with glazing issues. Well, some of the Epi Neverfalls also had glazing issues. So if you are going to go on the pre-love market, do look out for those problems. And some people did say the Epi leather lost shape. And it is true. Epi leather can lose shape. So it can become soft and become a bit wrinkly. So if you don't like that, make sure you watch out for that on the pre-love market listings as well. So if you go onto the purse forum and search Epi Neverfall, you'll find everyone's complaints there about what to look out for. Now we're on to Ompron. So this has already been dropped in the USA and this is the brand new Ompron Neverfall in the new cognac color. So we already had last year's cognac color, but they're re-releasing apparently in a slightly different shade. Let me know what you think. And this is the Neverfall with the giant monogram embossed into the Ompron. So this is priced at $2,710. This is $700 more than the standard canvas Neverfall. What do you think about that? That is a huge difference between the Ompron Neverfall and the canvas Neverfall. To me, that's kind of like, oh, is it really worth it? I don't know. I'm not like a Neverfall lover, so I'm not really Really sure what your opinion would be. Calling all Neverfull lovers out there, let me know, is it worth it the 700 US dollar price difference between the canvas and the Ompront one? Because to me, it just sounds like too much. So you can see here it has that giant Ompront embossing. This is the front, the side, and the interior. I mean, the other colors of the same type of Ompront bag, they're the same price. So you're not paying any more for the cognac one. And it has a microfiber lining. So Louis Vuitton have actually released so far seven pieces in this new cognac color for 2024. And they also have another color for fall 2024, which is called Arizona. So I actually made a whole separate video talking about the cognac and Arizona Ompron collections, which is going to be the new it colors at Louis Vuitton for fall 2024. So I'll leave that video here. Now the third never fall iteration coming out, which is in September, is the upside down never fall. So already out is the cognac Ompron. Then coming out is the Epi Heritage and also coming out is the upside down Neverfall. So this is coming out in two different sizes in September and the rumored prices are going to be for the MM 3,250 US dollars or 2,500 euro and for the BB 2,850 US dollars or 2200 euro. So this is a price difference of over 1200 US dollars between the upside down and the standard canvas one in the MM size, or nearly a thousand US dollars between the upside down BB and the standard canvas BB. That is a big, big difference in the price for the two different iterations. Uh, one thing I want to say about this style is, to me, it doesn't look upside down, it looks inside out. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm not seeing it correctly. Like when you say upside down, so this is what I imagine when I say upside down, like you look at the bag and you turn it upside down. So which means the bottom is the top and the top is the bottom. So this is what I would have imagined an upside down one would have looked like. But to me, this just looks inside out. But you know, look, I'm getting distracted by that. One thing I wanna say is this does look nice by having a soft pebbled leather on the outside. To me, it does make the bag look more elevated. What do you think? I mean, look, for that price difference, you want the bag to look more elevated. But I think it does like classy up the bag more so than usual. So I think both sides now look very nice. If anything, do you remember the My World Tour Never for the My World Tour collection, which had the monogram paired with the black leather, and everyone wanted the colored leather instead of the Vachetta, so they were getting the My World Tour one. The only caveat with that one was you had to get some travel stickers put on there, so you know, people would just if they didn't want the stickers, they just got like one and put it on the back. But now you don't have to, and it's a soft pebbled leather on one side, and it's got the black leather paired with it instead of the Vachetta. So I think this is a no classier version of the Never Fall. What do you think? So it is coming out apparently in two sizes in the MM. They've got a noir, which is a black, and they've also got a tan, which has a nice cognac shade to it as well. And I think the pouch looks very nice on this one too. It matches the color of the bag, 
but it appears as though the cinching straps are only on the monogram side. So if you're wearing the leather side on the outside, there will be no cinching straps. You might have to do your own hack, get your own cinching straps, use an O-ring or something, but it doesn't appear as though you get any if you're wearing it on that side. Another wonderful thing to point out with the upside down one is the pouch you get now has a D-ring on both ends of the pouch, meaning you can attach a strap and wear it as a cross body bag. And the strap it does come with is detachable on both ends. So very versatile now. You don't have to do any hacks or conversions. It's good to go. Now, unfortunately for this price point, the MM size, I would love to have seen it come with a shoulder strap, some feet, a top zipper, but unfortunately, no, it doesn't come with any of those. But the BB, however, just like the canvas, normal canvas BB, does come with a shoulder strap. And if anything, this shoulder strap is much more elevated compared to the canvas textile one that comes with the standard canvas BB. So I think they did a good job there picking the strap that goes with it. Not only that, for the BB one, it is a bit more elevated compared to the standard version because instead of coming with a round coin purse, you get that same pouch but like a shrunken version compared to the full size never four and again it's got d-rings on both ends with a de completely detachable strap so you can wear it as a crossbody bag so between the bb and the mm of the upside down you will get a shoulder strap with the bb but no shoulder strap with the mm now i can see how some of the people who bought the never four bb might see this new release and think you know what this is even better and might want to on sell the standard one that they bought and use that money to buy this one instead. Because I think this is definitely more elevated compared to the standard BB Neverfall. It has a nicer strap. It has a really good colorway. It is fuss free because it's Nova Shedder. And it's just more elevated because now you have a monogram side and a soft pebbled leather side. So I can definitely empathize if anyone wants to on sell their standard one and buy this instead. Or anyone who never caught on to the standard one because it just wasn't quite right, they might jump onto this one instead. Because I think this one is a good bag. A bit pricey, but it's a good bag. So tell me, what do you think of this nearly $1,000 price difference between the upside down BB and the standard BB. Is it too much of a difference? Is it unjustifiable? Let me know what your thoughts are. And the $1,200 difference for the MM size. I think that is unjustifiable. That's too much. Okay, now later on in November, they're releasing one called the Inside Out. I already thought the last one looked inside out, but that one was caught upside down. This one is actually called Inside Out. Now let's just put the two side by side. This is the upside down one. This is the inside out one. Even though they both look inside out, you can see the upside down one does look more elevated compared to the inside out one. Like the inside out one truly does look like they flipped it inside out because you have the external pocket, you know, showing out there and it does literally look like a canvas lining out there. So in November, this is rumored to be priced at 2,440 US dollars or 1,800 euro. So this is roughly $300 more than the standard canvas never for. $300 difference, look, not that bad. Not that bad compared to the upside down one, which has like a $1,200 difference for the MM side. This is okay. I still think the upside down one does look more elevated compared to this inside out one though. Okay, by this point, does anyone else have their heads spinning with all these Neverfuls going around and around? Because I definitely do. So if any of you guys don't already follow Lula Westlux TV channel, I would go to her channel because she's the queen of Louis Vuitton new releases. And I actually studied her video to help me with this video today. So thank you so much. So if you want to check out her video, which is even more in depth and she shows even more iterations coming out, I'm going to link her down below. So they appear to be launching three color interiors or should I call them exteriors? I'm not even sure anymore. So there's the rose pond, which is like a pinky color, a saffron, which is like a yellowy color, and rouge, which is like a reddy color. The great thing about this inside out model is they do come with a shoulder strap. The bad thing is, where's the pouch gone? The pouch seems to be missing. So are they jipping us? Are they saying, oh, we'll give you a strap and not the pouch? It appears as though there is no pouch with this one. So if any of you guys have further clarification on where is the pouch for the inside out, please let us know because I feel like that is not a good trade-off if you're paying 300 US dollars more to get a strap, but then to lose the pouch. I think they should have kept the pouch in there and then the $300 can just cover the extra strap. So these inside out bags come with a long shoulder strap. And what I love about that strap is on one side, it's monogram and the other side is a matching colored leather to the rest of the bag. 
Now, apparently this textile lining on the exterior, interior, whatever you want to call it, apparently it's resistant. I have no idea what that actually entails, but we won't know how durable it is until people start buying it and using it, and then we'll know what happens to it. Now, to add further hype and complication to these Louis Vuitton Neverfull releases, they decided to announce a exclusive, New York exclusive for the inside out. And it's going to have four colors instead of three. Now they look pretty much the same as the existing colors already announced. So there's the rose pond, the saffron and the rouge plus an additional blue. But this time they have removed nearly all of the bachetta and replaced it with matching colored leather. Other than the bit of bachetta that goes around the zippered pocket, all the other leather now is matching coated colored leather, which means it's very fuss free. So, and it's rumored to be the same price. So if you're someone who doesn't really like Bechetta, maybe try to get your hands on the New York exclusive. And then it's pretty much going to be like a My War Tour where it's all coated leather, except for, you know, the little bit around the zippered pocket, just that little bit of Bechetta. Now for me personally, the inside out one, I probably wouldn't wear it inside out. Like for me, it just doesn't look great. I would still probably wear it with the monogram on the outside. And again, I'm not really sure how resistant this fabric is. Like I need to hear some feedback, some real life feedback once people buy it and use it and cause some damage or stain it. But to me, it doesn't look great. I never see anyone actually wear all never force. Well, not all never force. The canvas never force are already reversible. I never see anyone wear it inside out. So for this one, I don't know. There's going to be people who's going to wear it inside out, but I don't see how that's going to be the majority. I think majority is still going to wear the, the monogram on the outside. So guys, tell me what was your favorite of the four different types of Louis Vuitton new releases? For me, it's the upside down BB in the noir. To me, that one is very expensive, but I think that one is going to be one of the it bags for the rest of the year. I think it's going to be very popular because it's fuss free. It's a cute little shape. It's going to be versatile, comes with a good strap. Not sure about the price, though. I don't know how many people are going to be able to afford it, but it is going to be, I think, better than the others. I'm really excited for the epi leather to come back. I mean, I'm not a never fool girly, so I'm not going to be buying it. But yeah, I love the fawn, the fauve, Kenyan fawn, whatever you want to call it. It is one of my favorite epi colors. So I'm really excited to see this return to Louis Vuitton and I'm really excited to see what other styles they're going to be releasing in the Kenyan fawn color now that it's back. Or I'm interested to see how long it's going to stay for. And I thought it was so interesting they brought back the vert Borneo or Borneo green. I mean, green is not like a hot color, but they brought it back. So I'm really interested to see what happens with that color. And tell me, what's your opinion on the inside out not having a pouch so far in the photos we've seen? I think that's a rip off. I think they need to put the pouch back. So guys, if you haven't already seen my video on the new release Cognac and Arizona collections for fall 2024, I'll leave it here. And if you guys haven't already seen my latest luxury unboxing, I'm going to leave it here.